moral poverty leads to physical poverty in many cases, or else they, you screw over other people, which they do a lot. So before and we get to the moral to poverty crime. thing, I'm gonna I'm not gonna let you back out of this one part because it's okay. a clear indication that you're just factually wrong and you're now like squirming and coping desperately. So if black people are unable to pay for a better lawyer, that falls right. back again on poverty rates. You cannot then just fault. say, well, black people should have just worked harder and made more money when we've already acknowledged that due to previous historic racist policies, there is not, less opportunity in those areas, and it's harder for black people to accumulate the same level of wealth, both current and generational wealth, than it is for white people. This is something that you river. cannot deny. Cry me a river, because you have not once acknowledged their lack of responsibility, which is a much bigger, it's a, has a, it's a much bigger factor in their so-called poverty. So if, let's, not let's, once wait, 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 let's go down this, let's go down. Take report crossing swords with Hunter Avalon and going first tonight is Hunter Avalon. So I will turn it over to Hunter for his 10 minute opening statement. Hunter, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. Of course, I'm taking the position that systemic racism is absolutely real and it's an almost undeniable fact, I would say. So I wrote something out. I will read it as quickly as I can. Uh, part of the reason systemic racism is so hard to understand is because it's multifaceted with downstream results from several historical policies. Excuse me. Some policies had the intention to screw over black people, while others are simply a result of an already broken system. Uh, so systemic racism is defined as a form of racism that is embedded in the laws and regulations of a society or an organization. In simple terms, systemic racism refers to a system that disproportionately negatively affects black people. That's going to be the definition that I am using today uh, because that is the definition and it's a simpler explanation. So systemic racism does not require intentionally racist laws to still be a big issue. Uh, so, for example, in 1934, the Federal Housing Administration successfully segregated neighborhoods on the basis of race, first incentivizing builders to build suburban neighborhoods with the requirement that no black people were allowed to purchase in those communities. This forced black people into urban housing projects. Uh, and at the same time, the Federal Housing Administration refused to insure mortgages in and near African-American neighborhoods, which was a policy called redlining. Maps would be color-coded with red lines to indicate risky, quote, areas to insure. Now, you might be thinking, this is a really long time ago. And yes, you'd be right. But the problem is that these discriminatory policies have a lasting effect to this day. Uh, according to the Brookings Institute, for the last two generations, we see higher starting poverty rates, lower upward mobility rates, and higher downward mobility rates for black people. The higher rates of poverty among black people is almost entirely a result of redlining. Americans generate wealth using their home equity, but for decades, blacks were restricted from growing generational wealth due to redlining. Uh, according to the Encyclopedia of Chicago, redlining had pernicious and damaging effects. Without bank loans and insurance, redlined areas lacked the capital essential for investment and redevelopment. As a result, suburban areas received preference for residential investment at the expense of poor and minority neighborhoods in cities like Chicago. Uh, so after this policy was finally done away with, it was unfortunately too late. Black people lost out on a huge chance to grow wealth to pass down to their children, and since the suburban homes increased in value over the decades, black people were no longer able to afford the nicer homes, leading to significantly less upward mobility compared to their white counterparts. This is still impacting black people today. Brookings Institute again explains that at $171,000, the net worth of a typical white family is nearly 10 times greater than that of a black family in 2016. Gaps in wealth between black and white households reveal the effects of accumulated inequality and discrimination, as well as differences in power and opportunity that can be traced back to this nation's inception. Black adults in their 30s are over 16 times more likely than white adults to be in the third generation of poverty in a row. Uh, in fact, black Americans are 41% more likely to be in third generation poverty than white Americans are to be poor. According to a research paper published by Park Place Economist, there is a direct correlation between poverty and violent crime rates. I know, I already see people in the chat saying 1350. 
sustained economic growth projects, reducing unemployment, progressive taxes, increasing benefits to the poor, and increasing jobs to fight violent crimes are all valid ways at reducing poverty and fighting violent crime. So this means that because of the federal government's redlining, the already poor black neighborhoods inevitably have a higher crime rate as well. Next, in the 60s and 70s, both the tough on crime approach along with the war on drugs were implemented. Since more crime already existed amongst the poorer black communities, more black people were subsequently targeted by the crackdown on drugs and crime. Higher crime rates also meant more police were put in the area to stop crime. And this might sound like the right move on its surface, but again, it has downstream effects. There isn't any intentional racism involved when deciding to put more police in an area with higher crime rates. But again, systemic racism is a system which results in disproportionate negative outcomes for black people. Higher encounters with police means a higher likelihood of being victimized by police brutality, which is a fact supported by statistics collected on police violence. According to Pew Research Center, in 2017, there were 1,549 black prisoners for every 100,000 black adults, nearly six times the imprisonment rate for whites. A 2020 ACLU report found that black people were much more likely to be arrested for marijuana usage, despite the fact that whites and blacks have consistently been shown to use the drug at the same rate. In 2013, a federal judge ruled stop and frisk, an aspect of the tough on crime approach, was unconstitutional. The judge found that the police department resorted to a policy of indirect racial profiling as it increased the number of stops in minority communities. That has led to officers routinely stopping blacks and Hispanics who would not have been stopped if they were white. According to an in-depth 2020 Nature study, which examined nearly 100 million traffic stops across the country, black drivers were less likely to be stopped after sunset uh, when uh, they were in a veil of darkness, masking one's race, which suggests bias in stop decisions. These biases extend outside of simply the police and poverty, but also to our criminal justice system as a whole. A 2014 study looked at 33 years of data, and they found that after adjusting for variables such as the number of victims and brutality of the crimes, jurors in Washington state were 4.5 times more likely to impose the death penalty on black defendants accused of aggravated murder than on white ones. According to a 2017 U.S. Sentencing Commission report, black male offenders receive sentences on average 19.1% longer than similarly situated white male offenders. Since systems are made up of people, subconscious biases can negatively affect the decisions made in regards to black people. Again, this does not mean that everyone here is an evil racist. It simply means that a long and painful history has contributed to the poor situation blacks are still in, and those poor situations play a role in shaping our perceptions today. So, in conclusion, to summarize, the government intentionally segregated white and black communities, which led to less generational wealth for black people, resulting in poorer neighborhoods and hence more crime. More crime follows more police, which means black people are negatively affected at disproportionate rates by police brutality and our criminal justice system as a whole. Black people did not choose to be in the position they are in today, and we really only have two options to take away from this relevant data. Either systems exist which severely disadvantage black people, or black people are all just stupid for not pulling themselves up by the bootstraps. Thank you so much for your opening statement, Hunter. And we will go ahead and kick it over to Hake for his opening statement. Hake, your first word. The floor is all yours. All right. Appreciate it, Kaz. And thank you, Hunter Avalon. It's nice to meet you on stream, man. Shout out to the chat. Uh, I love that two white guys are debating this imaginary idea called racism. It is a phony and contrived artificial illusion of an idea and it's uh <clears throat> regardless of results or intent it's a foolish thing to be uh caught up in and it only hurts blacks who get caught up in this fake idea um i'm glad that it's two white guys de debating it because we don't have the the um years of brainwashing from childhood generations upon generations forcing this on us so that they get so that i get triggered by the idea that there is no such thing as racism, because that's the reality. Um, I saw in the I saw on Twitter somebody said that this will this debate usually falls into a, a debate of definitions. One says our institutions don't have race based policies and therefore aren't racist. That's not my position. The other says our institutions, as Hunter said, produce unequal racial outcome. Therefore, it's racist regardless of intent. 
and he hopes for a productive discussion. I think we'll have one. Um, every example of quote unquote racism just honestly makes the, the quote unquote victim look bad. When you look at how, um, yes, there was segregation in the past. There wasn't, it wasn't racist. It was based on, uh, a reality that people, people are different communities. And it was, um, this was a white country and the white men wanted to hold on to their country. They didn't necessarily want to have these people have an equal status in society. And I don't think that that's an unreasonable position. But every example of this racism thing just makes the quote unquote victim look bad. And a result of some failure on the part of the, the whites or the blacks or the Asians or Hispanics or whoever imagines that they are a victim of racism. Right now we see a, a lot of anti-whiteness, but even that is not quote unquote racism. It's such a communist reversal of, of truth, of reality. You see blacks are the worst offenders, perpetrators. They feel like victims. Victims feel like victims eventually become perpetrators. And so it's a vicious circle. When you're told you're a victim, you get resentful. And then the whites are, are brainwashed into thinking, oh, I don't want to look racist. And so they have a little bit of extra fear and they're extra nice. And that only makes the blacks even more suspicious of them and project their imaginings of racism upon the whites. Because the reality is, when you ask blacks, have you experienced racism, they will say it. And then it's some imaginary thing that they read into their experience with a cop or with a white or whatever. Um, the, the blacks are like the most aggressive people, most, most full, filled with prejudice towards others of any race in America right now. They're not the innocent victims. And that's because they're taught that they're victims, I argue. And they're raised by the single mothers. And you can say that the government did encourage the single mothers to go into the home, but why did they take the bribe? It's a failure on their own part to take the bribe, to get their, the fathers out of the homes, for the mothers to, and the fathers to hate one another. And they hate one another more, now more than ever. Meanwhile, whites are the most like, fair-minded in America, accepting, embracing of other cultures. And we're supposed to be, expect that, oh, the cops are racist. They're shooting these blacks. They're, there's this police brutality, another imaginary idea. We need to deal with black brutality. And the blacks are begging for more police to deal with the black brutality in the black communities. And we all know this. As society deteriorates, we see wrongdoing expan expanding. This uh, family breakdown and moral breakdown and victimhood mindset is expanding into the other uh, ethnicities and other, even including whites, families are getting destroyed. Uh, people are getting educated. Blacks think, oh, the best, f the best way to get ahead is education. That's not true because you get indoctrinated in these government schools and even the private schools are full, filled with blind brainwashed people who are blind leading the blind. Crime grows, in, uh, dependence grows, degeneracy grows, this, uh, Women are leading the way, and women don't come, with, come up with good solutions. And women have been dominating the black communities for several decades now. And it's been a, it's, that's, I argue that's probably the primary reason why they're suffering so much. And unfortunately, the other races are following suit. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of pick and choose in terms of hate crimes and things like that. That's why you see um, with the federal with the federal government, it's politically motivated. That's why you see picking you see cherry picked things like the January 6th thing or the uh, Unite the Right Charlottesville situation. They, they act like the whites or the Trump supporters are the primary offenders, the real insurrectionists. Meanwhile, they ignore and encourage the I say they I'm talking about the establishment media, social media, government uh, and everything else. They're propping up Black Lives Matter and everything else. It's pretty disgusting. They racially profile white cops as being brutal on George Floyd and Walter Scott and all that stuff, defending themselves against out of control blacks who are brainwashed to hate cops and to not want to go to jail and throw their lives away. They're disproportionately uh, resisting arrest, killing cops, killing one another, killing whites. It's pretty out of control. Black crime is out of control, and the black attitude is also out of control. 
among the people who are pretty law abiding. They have a blind mindset and they're not told the truth. They have a they have a total um, vacuum of truth. They go into their churches. The preachers preach, oh, be Democrats. Racism is real. We prop up women. Uh, gays are OK and all that stuff. And they go into their schools, CRT and racism is real. And black, uh, America was founded on slavery and genocide. All these fake things. But life is not supposed to be this fair thing. But right now we have this female minded idea of fairness. But in, in reality, that's not how life works. In the Bible, Christ said to him who has more will be given. But to him, from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And so the people who have, who have money or the people who have a can-do mindset, they thrive in life. And nobody is stopping blacks from voting and all that stuff. Voter suppression is a whole bunch of, it's a whole pack of lies. And so I say there is no such thing as racism, systemic or otherwise. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Hake, for your opening statement. We will go ahead and kick into open discussion in just a second. I want to let you know, folks, especially if this is your first time at Modern Day Debate, that we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We want you to feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. And if you have a question for one of tonight's, tonight's debaters, we want you to fire it up, fire it into the old live chat and tag me at Modern Day Debate. Super chats will go to the top of the list. We ask that you keep it civil. Insults will not be read. Uh, please, uh, attack the argument and not the debater uh, that goes for the live chat discussion as well uh please be respectful of the moderators they work tirelessly to elevate the discussion so please show them the debaters and each other respect our guests are linked in the description below whether you're listening on youtube or via the podcast so if you like what you're hearing please go ahead and check out their links and uh check out their uh content and subscribe to them as well also we're going to have a after show after the debate tonight uh, on my channel so there'll be that will be linked in the description below so if you want to check that out please go ahead and do that uh hit the subscribe button so you can check out uh more debates that james has coming for you tomorrow night uh sharia law uh they're gonna be debating is sharia law good for humanity with dr david wood um and with that we will go ahead and kick it into the open discussion for one hour uh at your first word gentlemen the floor is all yours yeah, Cake, could I start off by asking you a couple things about your opening? Yes. Um, well, I don't know if you realize this, but you mentioned a bunch of issues that are all results of systemic racism. So the first thing you said was that this is a was a f uh, white country founded for white people. I don't know if you believe that, how it's so inconceivable that if the country was literally founded for white people, there could not also exist certain systems that are screwing over people that aren't white. That's the first thing. The second thing you said was that blacks are the most aggressive. Um, again, when it, we're talking about violent crime, this is a downstream effect of uh, poverty, and poverty is a result of previous historical racist policies. Lastly, you brought up single mothers, which if we're going to talk about, for example, well, there was a government policy that was put in place that screwed over the black community and led to more single mothers. That is systemic racism. It can come from the Democrats, just like it can come from the Republicans. Uh, furthermore, an example of systemic racism is literally that black men are disproportionately arrested for uh, minute drug offenses. And so that's another contributing factor as to why there is a, a higher rate of single mothers. So I don't know if you realize that you brought up a bunch of things in your opening that are actually all based on uh, systemic racism. I say that none of those things are systemic racism. And the white countries are the most fair to the so-called minorities. Um, to deal with the, the fact that this is a white country and it was made by white people, how about some appreciation rather than resentment? Because resentment is what blacks are fed by the people that you're listening to. And that has only made them worse off because you leave out the spirit. You think that this poverty thing causes crime, but poverty does not cause crime. It's, if anything, it's the reverse, but really it's a, a lack of morals. It's a lack of character. And, a, and, a, and you say that the family situation was, was a result of racist policy. It's, it, w they took the bribe. So I say that they, we, they need, they will benefit most from responsibility. You, you treating I, them like victims is not love. Well, I actually agree with you that 
when we're talking about unequal uh, or systemic racism, we absolutely should encourage the individual, no matter what circumstance they're in, to strive for a level of personal responsibility and to try to do as best as they can, regardless of the circumstances they're in. But again, there's still issues even with that. So I think we would probably both agree that, hey, uh, being responsible in this situation would probably look like going out and look and getting a job, right? If you're living in poverty, it's probably really important that you go out and get a job. But there are issues with that as well, that if you have a black sounding name, uh, you're less likely to get callbacks on your job resumes. So there's all kinds of systemic issues and biases that exist that are holding black people back. You say that they're not appreciative, which uh, I don't know where the proof of that is. I think that most people who explain live in what you mean by that appreciative. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah. Appreciative can, of whites. Yes. Rather than well, I think that people can be resentful. appreciate. I think that people can be uh, uh, they can appreciate the country they live in while still recognizing that there are more things that need to change for the better in this country as well. Do you disagree with that? Um, I do not disagree with that, but they misdiagnose the problem. You mentioned the black sounding names. Part of that is their own fault because blacks are trained to uh, for a few generations now. They've been trained to come up with more Africans esque sounding names. And those parents are, have a chip on their shoulder They're That's why they're naming their kids not normal names. So you think the parents those, are resentful towards whites. So they're giving yes. their black kids black sounding names. Yeah, they have this. How are you reaching idea. that conclusion? Because this sounds like delusion to me right now. The, they're the ones who are deluded, yes. No, they you're deluded if you think that you're somehow able to uh, apply motive to these people's actions. This is why ridiculous. Else they have, do you, why else would they have? Let do me, you think let me that people, hold on, wait, wait, wait. No. Do you think that black or white people who name their children Jake and John have a chip on their shoulder to black people and that's why they're giving them white sounding names? No, because that's, that, that's a normal American name. They're not trying to be, they're not trying to be different. They're not trying to be all into the into their unique culture and separate from the rest of America. You're doing that That's right what these now. Doing. You're literally saying that this is a white country built by whites for whites and that blacks right. should be appreciative of white people. You right yes. now are playing into this cultural thing about white people. And, and smart blacks would assimilate rather than try to be different. You'll see Asians will name their kids with American sounding names or they'll or they'll use an American sounding name. I Some of them are changing one back to that. A, at, I want to focus on one thing at a time though, because right. you're trying to apply It's intent. resentment that causes, yeah. How it's is resentment. it resentment? How are, where, how are you reaching this conclusion? I'll show you the proof. Look at the attitudes that so many blacks have. You hear a black sounding name, you're like, oh gosh, this black is gonna have attitude in my business. He's gonna cry racism. That's when called I have being to racist, him. actually. What you're saying right now is called being racist. No, it's not. It's it's reality. It's risk assessment. This is it's like me saying, assessment. Oh no, I'm when gonna hire, hire somebody. Some this is like me saying, Oh no, I'm gonna hire a white guy named uh named Jake. Uh, I bet he's gonna be a school shooter. If you're making assumptions based on people, purely based on their name, that not you assumption. are deriving some kind of ethnic identity from, that is racism. No, you're taking a risk when you hire anybody. And why would you take an extra risk of somebody who, when you haven't have a lot of experiences, you, you may not have a lot of experiences with school shooters, but you have a lot of, of experiences with this black attitude. And I'm putting that in quotes. And it's something that they do have. And especially when they have like these Shanae and all these crazy names, because they, they're, they're names. raised. They're not culturally significant. They, they started coming up. The slaves weren't named with that, with those names. They changed, they changed it in order to be into this false black identity. I mean, I don't the, even know. I, you're, you're just making assertions decades. right now and you're basically applying some ill intent. Uh, you on think black the slaves people. were called Shanae? No, I think that you're asserting that their name, their uh, black people are sometimes given black sounding names for some kind of resentment against whites. I think that that's really ridiculous and has no bearing in reality. Have a, are you have, are you aware that most blacks resent? Are you unaware that most blacks resent whites and have this idea of that that they're such victims of racism? Uh, I mean, I think that there's pretty solid evidence that black people are victims of a lot of racism, considering what I just laid out at the beginning of my my uh, in my intro here. The, the most blacks don't know anything about what you're talking about. So, I don't some care. of them are, are educated and, and have been brainwashed into the, those false victimhood narratives. How is but it false? most of them? Most of them will will be like, oh, yeah, this racism is real. And they'll say, oh, this racist cop or this racist white. They, they project racism on anything when they get caught or in trouble. They'll, they'll cry racism.
we've all ex been through this. We've all experienced I mean, it's, this. Anybody it's a little funny that you're harping on black people having this attitude of resentment towards whites, which I don't know if you have any actual supporting data for that. But even if I were to grant that, have you're you saying that black it? people, you, hold on, you're saying that black people <laughs> have resentment towards whites. And now you're up here making arguments that would only lead to more resentment against white people. From black people like if anything you're uh -huh. contributing to that issue that you're complaining about how even so? though the issue seems to be more or less made up how how am i contributing to this issue of black attitude because you saying that out? blacks are aggressive and anti-white and they hate white people so that's why they're naming their children the way they are and they should just be thankful to the white people is yes. ridiculous and that it's not ridiculous yes it does it breeds resentment you're complaining about the problem that you're simultaneously contributing to I'm not contributing to it by pointing out the issue. They should be they should be grateful and they should be responsible and they should become Americans rather than calling themselves African Americans, which is also a new thing, and have having all these black sounding names. They're aware of it. If you get them behind closed doors, they're honest about it. And and you get them <laughs> behind closed doors with people who when they cry racism over any little weird thing, the most bizarre things they'll cry racism about. And you know this to be true. You've seen it all over. Well, no. Right now, it's funny, you, too, because hold on, wait, because now you're actually appealing to intuition, which you said that there's the female minded idea of being fair. You're more or less appealing to feelings and intuition right now, which, in my opinion, is a little bit more female minded sounding. But it's experience. Everybody you, has seen this. But you're, you're making assertions based on your yeah. own personal experiences, your intuition, which is not a. Uh, uh, it's not comparable or analogous to the broader statistics that we're talking about here. So even if you met a white or a black person who seemed to have a chip on their shoulder against white people, that does not then follow that this is a problem amongst all of black people. Furthermore, if there was an issue amongst all of black people, we would have to ask, why is that? Why is black culture the way that it is today, right? Because it's woman-led. It's anger-led. And it's in its utter denial to pretend that blacks don't have an attitude when so, they're uh, resisting arrest like crazy. I have they're... a yes or no question for you. Do you think that okay. we are pro a product of our environment? Yes. In the fallen state, yes, we are. Okay. So if we are products of our environment, how then does it not follow that black culture is also a product of said environment? They're, they're mothers. Indeed, you're right. Wait, so you're saying it's led by women because of the higher rate yep. of single mothers, correct? Yes, in part. But even when the fathers are in the home, the fathers are weak and letting the woman run the show. Okay. Well, I don't, again, you're just making assertions here. But if I were you to don't grant, know that? You know, no. If I were to grant you the claim that there are more single mothers amongst black communities, then that is literally, a, that is literally a result <laughs> of systemic racism. No, it's not. It's their own fault for taking the bribe. So during times of segregation, was it black people's own for fault for refusing to go into uh, businesses that said no blacks allowed? That's that's not a problem. Wait, that was not a problem for them because they had their own businesses during segregation. Was it yes. on the black people who were discriminated against in certain areas because they didn't just break the rules or do something? To fight against it. Segregation wasn't this big, wasn't this big problem for them. Uh, I don't know. Again, you're you're just making assertions right now. You're being very female minded, my friend. I can go and tell you more and more information if you'd like about redlining and the federal attempt, the intentional federal attempt at segregating black people from white people, which I just read a plethora of, or a plethora of statistics that all demonstrate that this still has negative effects on black people today. No, that's not what's what's that's not what's causing them to have uh, to be suffering to this day. A, a, um, a fortune is won and lost and won and lost in a single lifetime. They can turn, they can turn themselves around. So why is it that we're seeing had... poverty go down through generation to generation? Do you think that there's any kind of issue here with poverty and leading to generational disadvantages? No, I okay. don't buy that at all. So are you just yeah, rejecting I mean, yes, the studies are... that indicate this? I mean, you're, you're making a claim that this is from that their issues are from the the housing discrimination, which is totally false. You're you look at how the they live. Their issues are you from resentment the... against white people. OK, you're appealing to some uh, untangible feeling that you're just applying all blacks have. 
Meanwhile, I have Most. literal statistics and studies indicating that because of previous historical racist policies, black people are now disproportionately in the situations that they're in today. How does this when not follow at, through to you? You can you can look at your studies and statistics all you want with uh, and not look at the reality of, of these things. But when you bore down into the individual's lives, you see how they live is a much bigger f impact on it. And how on, they live uh, is a result of systemic racism. No, no, your, your sense of responsibility, your, your moral being has, has nothing to do with your, with your exterior and you can overcome it, but they don't want to overcome it. Okay. So because you're, they're you're making blind the, and brainwashed. Okay. Hold on, in hold on, wait. Hatred. So you're making the argument now that black people are just being stupid because they're not just pulling themselves up by the bootstraps. When you are, when you are angry, you are stupid. Yes. Okay. And they are sure. angry so and blind and brainwashed. The, okay, cool. So you're making the, it's all on black people. They're dumb because they should by just figure large. out how this is, the, the disadvantages and just pull themselves up by it. So I need to ask, why is it that poverty is trickling down through generations? Do you think just generations and generations and generations of black people are all just kind of dumb? Like, don't you think that there has to be more issues here at play? For sure, there are there are outside things that make things that make life tougher. You are right. Okay. They 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 vote very foolishly for uh, for people who do not care about them and who bring in illegals and immigrants who take the jobs and then they're this they're is another subsidized statistically and paid. unproven thing. You're very no, womanly minded. No, this entire don't, conversation don't me, so far. I'm disappointed. Don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. It's just you're being very they womanly. Are... I'm sorry. Okay. If you're if you're not familiar. Um, immigration has been quite out of control and it's been a frustration for both whites and blacks for many decades now. And the people most at risk, most vulnerable to job losses and all of that stuff are the, are the people at the bottom, the blacks. And they're the ones suffering the most the from, argument you're making. from illegals. There are already they're suffering statistics from the, that indicate that people at the bottom of the uh, earning statistics or whatever suffer only marginally from immigration. So this is more or less yeah, a non-issue. Yeah, they're, they're paid not to This work. is more or less a non-issue that again is you're obfuscating from the actual question at hand here, which is black people should take responsibility just as we all yes. should take responsibility and do as best we can to better ourselves. But there are barriers in the way of black people trying to better themselves that do not exist for white people. And the barrier is their own anger. No, you cannot say yes. it's all just on their attitude because black people, quote unquote, are too big of a statistic for you to just apply a attitude across the entire board. What you're doing right well, now is they, just as bad as the anti-white CRT people, okay, uh -uh. that say, hold on, it's just as bad as the anti-white CRT people that say, yeah, you know, all white people, they, they're just, they just really hate black people. If you get them alone, you know, then, uh, you know, you'll see that they really hate black people. Okay, You're let making me the respond same to argument that. right now. No, I'm not, because there are there are many blacks who want to be responsible, but they suffer because of the the good suffer with the bad. They have enough enough bad black attitude that people don't necessarily want to take the risk. I grant so you that. How does the, the bad black attitude contribute to the disproportionate rate of poverty? Because they have they lose out on on uh, on some opportunities because people don't trust black people as much as white people because whites have established a reputation of being kind, polite, responsible, showing up on time, not trying to cry racism or sue you if you have to discipline I mean, them or fire racism. them. You were talking about anti-white. And so, and so, yes, it does. It does. The good do have to suffer from the uh, with the bad, unfortunately. But if they have an understanding about that, rather than blaming the whites for something that the blacks have, the other blacks have done, then uh, then they can advance in life and people so, will people will reward that. So you realize that in areas like communities or neighborhoods that are more poor, part of the problem there is that because they were not insured for so long, it left those communities out of proper investment and development, which lowers the uh, availability of opportunities in those neighborhoods. So. This is all a result, a downstream result of systemic racism. These are all policies that are, have resulted in negative outcomes for black people. You keep saying like, oh, they just they have this bad attitude, you know, or they should just do better, you know. But if they try and quote unquote do better, there are barriers there again. That's what barriers? I just told you. 
There's the issue with the names, which I know you're going to say, oh, well, this is just resentment or whatnot. There's the issues with when you live in an area that's already poor, you have higher rates of crime. Since you weren't insured for so long, the type of businesses and opportunity is not available to you in those areas the same way that it is in better communities that were previously insured. And who's keeping those communities messed up? They themselves. Do you not realize that when you put poverty together, you then have higher rates of crime as well? But poverty does not cause the crime. No, we can't prove causation for virtually anything. Okay. So when you have higher rates of crime, no, no, no. This is like a known sociological fact. Okay. That when you have higher rates of poverty, it contributes to more crime, which then contributes to more poverty and it becomes a vicious cycle. So again, you're one. You, that this would have to be based on the assumption, essentially, that black people were all just committing crimes, which is not no. true. But there's higher rates of crime in poor areas. But the reason those areas are poor is because of previous government policies like redlining. No, I don't buy that, man. Uh, because so you just don't buy it. You're just going to say, yeah, no. are you say. Are you saying that? Are you saying that poor people are more immoral? That's why they're committing crime. No, I'm saying that when you're poor you're more likely to commit crime because you're in a place of desperation. Yes. No, man, that's not how it works, buddy. Okay. Well, I guess you're, yeah, you're just making are, assertions these people right are, now. No, what, you're making assertions. No, you I have, have actual have statistics to back me up and you're being womanly minded. Statistics don't by, tell you causation. No, 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 you're being womanly minded by appealing to your feelings right now. Statistics do not, Im, do not tell you causation. You telling so you me that black that, people all have a bad attitude does not imply causation either, my friend. I know, but it's logical, and everybody knows it. Everybody it's knows it's not logical that they have at all. Attitude. You determine what is and is not logical. Have you if ever, it's borne have out you ever by had empiricism? Have you ever had? Look, answer my question honestly. Have you ever had a run-in with a black with an attitude, with a black attitude specifically? Um, I've had a couple run-ins with whites with an attitude. That's not what I, I asked. I say you. that all white people have that's, an attitude. That's not what I asked you. I've never encountered a black person with an attitude. No. Wow, very sheltered. Where do you live? No, I'm not sheltered. What it is is that do I live? don't need to hold on. I don't need to have personal experiences to form my opinion because that's what irrational live? people do. Okay. Where do you live? So I'm not going to answer where I live, Hake. This is irrelevant oh. to the to the what state? Uh, debate. What state? I live in Maryland. Okay. That's I did, that's all I wanted to know. Um, how old are you? So hold on. Before we get down the line of, of personal uh, interrogations or whatever, <laughs> we need to be able to focus on the actual data at hand. And I know you don't want to, and that's fine. But no, I don't know data what is not you. what it's about. So. There is, it's not just data. Do you acknowledge, yes or no, that there was at one point a policy called redlining? This is a yes or no question. Okay. Do you also acknowledge that certain policies can have negative downstream uh, effects? Yes. Okay. So how is it then that a policy such as redlining, you're now arguing, does not have downstream negative effects? I'm saying that that's not the primary thing. You said, you said... Almost entirely the result of redlining. That's a, I think that's a direct quote. A yeah. phrase that you actually said is, is what, what they are suffering for. Lack of generational wealth. Yes. Forced, because if you're not able to build up areas. equity, then how are you down going in to the get south, more wealth? Down in the South, they were not forced into urban areas. This may have happened in the North. During in, redlining, in Chicago, they were. Stuff. During redlining, they They didn't they really were. have too much in the way of urban areas down in the South. They, many of them were rural. And maybe that's why they're doing better in the South, because they didn't get brainwashed into this degeneracy that you found in the city. You keep saying brainwash this, brainwash that. But at the end of the day, we have documented evidence. The end of what day? Hold on. We have documented evidence that a policy called redlining existed. We also have documented studies and sociological knowledge, which indicates that when people are poor, they are more likely to either engage in crime or be victimized by crime as well. So this is all a downstream effect of previous racist policies, which is, by its definition, a system that is disproportionately negatively affecting black people. And here's the other thing that I have a problem with. Hold on. Here's another thing that I have a problem with. If we were to acknowledge that these policies are contributing to negative outcomes for black people, then we can go about fixing this. You just saying, but blacks all have a bad attitude, bruh. What are we supposed to do (laughs) from that? Where do we go from that? Do we just make do we just tell black people to just stop having an attitude? This doesn't make sense. That we can help. fix policies. We can't just tell people to have a better attitude and expect to Yes, you can. You can tell people, but you can't expect any uh significant change to come from it. Well, if you don't shut up the whites who are telling them, 
then maybe a change might come Who's because shutting you up the bring lights? some light because you'd bring some light of truth into it. Right right now you're, you're just blaming asserting that it's truth. Right now you're blaming black people for I mean you're blaming the redlining or whatever for everything or for the almost entirely the result, right? But you're in, interestingly you're leaving out the notion of morality and family. Why and you're saying, you saying, oh, oh, the family was broken up by racism. It was racism that broke not, them up. No, 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 no they, not racism. They were Systemically racist policies yeah, have contributed thing. to disproportionate rates of single mothers in you the black community. Contributed. What, what contributes more, your own moral decisions or immoral decisions or the outside influences of bribes from the government? How does somebody... How does someone's attitude influence whether or not their husband or their boyfriend or the man of the house, whatever, is locked up and sent to prison for a minor drug offense? That's not that's that's very dishonest statement or it's ignorant uh, to pretend that the the incarceration is why they have single mothers. It's not the only not reason reality. why, but it's definitely a huge contributor to it. It's not that big of a contributor, buddy. No, it is. I just read that black people are and it's, uh, and it's their six own fault. times. The the wait, wait, wait. There's six times the imprisonment rate for white people, okay? This is going to have a negative effect on black families as a whole. You keep complaining about Whose the issues. Is that? Whose fault is that that they're in Certain jail? policies that are trying to crack down on drugs and crack down on crime that are not being carried out properly and are resulting, again, with negative outcomes for black people. So you're talking out of both sides of your mouth because you're not, si you're not blaming them for, the, for the, their moral failures and their uh, lack of sense in not committing crimes or not getting caught committing crimes you're not you making about any the, sense you're you're, you're, you're not, not making any sense. sense right now you're listen, being fe listen. so female-minded right now <laughs> that's funny um you claim that uh blacks and and whites supposedly use the the um marijuana mar they're getting they're more likely to be arrested for marijuana usage i think it's possession really more likely what they're arrested for but they they use it differently Whites do it in in uh, behind closed doors or off in the in the boonies, mm -hmm. and blacks do it on the streets and and are more shameless about it. And like you said, they have higher violent crime rates, so they do have more police attention. So even and if they I have were to attitude. grant you that, which I don't believe that that's true, because I'd have to see a study to prove it. But even if I were oh, to grant, Lord. even if I were Can't to grant see you for that, yourself. wait, wait, even if I were to grant you that, then still that higher crime rate. And is the higher likelihood of police in that area is a result of systemic racism. You're treating black people oh. as if, yes, you are. Yes, they, you're treating black people as if they live in a vacuum, that they're just all, you're essentially uh, implying that black people are not a product of their environment, just like we all are a product of our environment. If there are no, higher man, crime rates in your neighborhood, that there's a reason for that. Why are there higher crime rates? Usually, it's attributable to higher rates of poverty. Okay, why are there higher rates of pro poverty? We have to go See, down the line here. No, po again, poverty does not cause crime. You can say it all you want, but maybe it's maybe you're an atheist. Are you an atheist? Is this why you believe that the poverty is causing the crime? Are you female-minded? Because you seem really intent on believing like what your feelings over any kind of empiricism. But there's no empirical evidence that shows that poverty causes crime. That is not yeah, true. They're, they're there is correlated. a fuck ton of empiricism, which demonstrates that the higher the poverty a rate, what ton? The a fuck ton of empiricism, <laughs> which demonstrates Whoa. that the higher the poverty rate, the higher the crime rate. And by reducing poverty, hold on, by reducing poverty, you then reduce the crime rate. Correlation is not causation. I know. And you can say you can you can make all these claims that you like. But uh, basically, you're bribing them. You're not addressing the root issue. And the root you're issue is the lack the of morals. Issue. No, because you're not addressing the morals, root issue. You can't just it, say it, lack of morals, lol. We need yeah, to be able to work with what I'm, actually I'm not is. No, no, no. We need to be able to work and make tangible change. Again, you just saying get better about, morals, bro, isn't going to do anything. Whereas opposed to if we address these policies and the way that they have disproportionately screwed over black people, then we can go to make actual real change. You're not making any sense. You're not following through here, my dude. If we want to go this route, let's say, fine, that black people have low morals and, and they all have bad attitudes. Then why is it that black people are Mostly. given? Then why is it that black people are sentenced to death more often than white people? Is it just because they had a bad attitude in the courtroom? 
Uh, they have worse lawyers in in many cases. Like like you mm -hmm. said, they have a lack of morals, so they don't they don't work for themselves. They don't build up that money so that they can pay a decent lawyer if they, they do happen build to up commit the money crimes because of the poverty. So you're you're once again because falling they're, into the systemic they're racism they're not argument. Responsible. You're falling into the it's, systemic racism it's argument a, again. It's a moral poverty. It's not a lack of money that they're suffering from. Wait, and you don't. Everybody pay a, knows it. You're okay. You don't pay a lawyer with moral wealth. When you have okay? morals, you work. When you work, you make money. When you have morals, we went you don't the, need to. Multiple when you have a morality, here, you you can save your money. You have better sense. God gives good sense to His people, and so, so these people are godless. They, they have this imaginary thing that, oh, we are Black so people Christian. are also godless. I can cite another study for you. A 2000 study of federal cases found that federal prosecutors were about 50% more likely to offer a plea bargain to white murder suspects than black suspects that allowed them to avoid the death penalty. So even if and? we're, so there are all kinds of biases here that affect the higher rate of black people being given the death sentence compared to white people who commit the same kind of crime. No, they're not committing the same kind of crime. You can say, oh, it was murder and this was murder. But there are a whole lot of things that went into their lives and it went into their crimes that they committed. There, you can say plea deals all you want, but there's a whole lot of times where blacks commit crimes that they're never caught for. I mean, they're, what does they're that have to getting do with away with murder. They death. get away with murder. Blacks get away with murder more than anybody. What does that have to and, do with being given the death sentence? They're just assuming that the black person probably did a crime earlier, so they give him a sentence Look for that into also? the specifics. I guarantee you, look into the specifics, and it'll be much more reasonable than you're pretending. Okay, sure. So here's a specific for you. This isn't about the death sentence, but it's about the fact that black people get way higher, uh, they get longer times in prison. U.S. Sentencing Commission 2017 report. Uh, black male offenders continue to receive longer sentence than similarly situated white male offenders. Black male offenders receive sentences on average 19.1% longer. Violence in an offender's criminal history does not appear to account for any of the demographic differences in sentences. Black male offenders receive sentences on average 20.4% longer than similarly situated white male offenders. Violence in an offender's criminal history does not appear to contribute to the sentence imposed to any extent beyond its contribution to the offender's criminal history score determined under the sentencing guidelines. So we literally have- Those are have... specifics. Those are not specifics. Those are statistics. You're not giving me and statistics. statistics don't tell either. you the whole story. No, your specific is they just have a bad attitude, bruh. My specific is, <laughs> hey, here's a U.S. Sentencing Commission report, which clearly indicates that even when you control for the violent crime and the, the other variables that you're talking about, they still are given longer prison sentences. So you need yeah, to tell me. Not, so why is those, that? Those aren't specifics. You're talking about broad statistics that don't why? tell the specific you story of, a, of an individual case. You need to tell me why that is. You need to tell me why that is. Is it because of their bad attitude? Why do I have to tell you why? Because you're asserting you, right now you're assuming that, that it's racism, and I'm saying, uh, no, I'm, I'm not assuming if anything they're given racism, a pass. I'm demonstrating that this is systemic racism. It is a no. system where there might not be any intentional uh, attempt at being racist to black people, but the way the system operates still disproportionately screws over black people. So if your yeah, argument is, I don't think is, they're being screwed over. I know you don't, but I don't care. Not. So if your argument yeah. is, well, you know, they all have bad attitudes and they're morally bankrupt. How does being morally bankrupt account for the fact that black people are given longer sentences as opposed to white people who've committed the same crime? They haven't committed the same crime. That's the reality. So you're, how do you know that? Because every crime is its own crime. They did not commit the same crime. There are the sentencing averages and sentencing guidelines based you on comparable crimes. And the statistics that I just cited to you were compared to white people who were similarly situated and who account or who committed the same crime. So you need then to Then why don't me, you go into it, the individual stories? That's what I mean by specifics. Lo go into the individual stories. And look into it yourself if you if you care about this issue so much. I want to know how the bad attitude of black people and the morally bankrupt attitude amongst black people has anything to do with the fact that they are on average given longer prison sentences compared to white people who committed the same crime. How bad attitudes this... makes bad attitude leads you to less opportunities. Less opportunities means less money. You have a poorer lawyer. You have um, you don't show up to court. You uh, have a bad attitude, 
with the uh, with your own lawyer or with the judge, all kinds of issues come up. So you think so, that the black person didn't show up for court, and that's why they I were didn't, on I don't average think anything. given sentences twenty point seven percent longer than white people who committed the same same crime. Yeah, quite. It's quite. Re- it's a quite a reasonable speculation because you're not giving me any specific story. You're just telling me about broad statistics, the which fact tells that me you nothing. Think you need a story is really disappointing, dude. This is why I keep saying. Why is it disappointing? Because, because this you're, is, you're using you're lying with statistics. You're lying with saying, your stories, oh, and you're being female minded. You're literally saying, "I'm not going to believe this until unless." <laughs> Do you, you really talk. believe in this female minded thing? I'm so glad that this is spreading. No, I don't. You but I think that, that the fact that you accuse like other people of being female minded when you have the the peak have I female called, mind have I is really fe- quite have, hilarious. Have I mentioned? So, I've mentioned female minded once in this. You realize that you've said it like five times. Yeah, because it's because you're demonstrating it right now. But you realize again that this is a result of systemic inequality, and you keep trying to say bad attitudes, this bad attitudes, that. But you're not telling me what actually accounts for this massive gap when it comes to black people being given longer sentences. You're literally saying unless hold on, you're literally saying that unless you tell me a bedtime story then I'm not going to believe the U.S. Sentencing Commission report. Ooh, U.S. Sentencing Commission report. Let me appeal to this authority. Give me a break. We all know that statistics, statisticians are liberals and liberals lie. And they, and they cherry pick things. And, and honestly, who cares? What do you care about this? This, I is, do. this doesn't prove anything. No, this, this you demonstrates it clearly it so much, the go- systemic racism claim, which I am arguing the affirmative position, And when you have data that is staring you in the face, indicating that even when black and white people commit the same crimes, the black male is more likely to have a longer prison sentence than the white male and get sentenced to death because you cannot like reason reason this in your your mind. You're instead coping. Hold on. You're coping coping, right now. And you're saying, oh, well, I don't believe any of the statistics because they're just all done by liberals. You're coping yes. right now because the That's truth. That's not coping. Yes, it is because the no, truth of the matter is, is that there is a uh, mountain of evidence in front of you right now. There's a Mount Everest of Please. data indicating systemic racism, and you're just saying, "Nuh-uh, it's just all bad." That's what you're saying. No, because you you have not once acknowledged the lack of responsibility f- that y- for uh, for their actions. I don't need Not to. Once did you, I, when first I said, of all, yes, I did. Second of all, I don't that they're need committing to. Crimes. Hold on. You said it's the government's fault that no, they're committing crimes. No, I didn't. Crimes. I did not say and it's I the list, government's fault And I listed crimes. off. Hold on. Let me respond to what you said because you made it. You made this claim that I didn't explain why it might be a big difference in sentencing and death penalties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Do you admit that a good lawyer versus a bad lawyer makes a big difference in the sentencing? Do you? It. Uh, I will. But if you only can admit then that a good lawyer or a bad lawyer is oftentimes uh, hingent upon your money, the money that you're able to pay right. for a good lawyer. And so whose fault again, is that? We're back to the same thing, which is if black people are unable to pay for a better lawyer, this That's falls back again on the poverty rates and the higher rates of uh, poverty amongst this area in black communities, and which I is a result not... of systemic racism. No, man. That, that's the pretense because it's not physical poverty that makes them – it's not physical poverty that's pushed on them by the whites. It's their own lack – it's their moral poverty that causes them to be physically quote-unquote poor. And they're like the richest blacks in the world. Give me a break. And, and it also causes them to be more, more criminal. Moral poverty leads to physical poverty in many cases. Or else they you screw over other people, which they do a lot. So before and we get to the moral to poverty crime. thing, I'm gonna I'm not gonna let you back out of this one part because it's okay. a clear indication that you're just factually wrong and you're now like squirming and coping desperately. So if black people are unable to pay for a better lawyer, that falls right. back again on poverty rates. You cannot then just fault. say, well, black people should have just worked harder and made more money when we've already acknowledged that due to previous historic racist policies, there is not- less opportunity in those areas. And it's harder for black people to accumulate the same level of wealth, both current and generational wealth, than it is for white people. This is Cry something me that a you river. cannot deny. Cry me a river because you have not once acknowledged their lack of responsibility, which is a much bigger 
it's a, has a it's a much bigger factor in their so-called poverty. So if let's not let's, once wait, 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 let's go down this let's go down lack this of for a minute. So let's say that they have a uh, lack of responsibility. Okay, what let's should say, they do? Let's to be, say what should they do to be more responsible? Now? What should they do to become more responsible? Stop blaming whites and forgive their mothers and uh, get a job. And um, so how do they get a job? Apply to apply. Don't don't be too proud. Work with. So do the, you think that it's more yeah. challenging to get a job uh, in a location in which there's yeah. far less opportunity? Yep, it is. But there are opportunities everywhere. So you're now acknowledging that there are less opportunities for Black people. But there are opportunities. And it doesn't matter if there are opportunities. Again, we're talking. It about does matter. No, no, no. We're talking That's about all disproportionate the rates fucking over black people that's what i'm sticking to this whole time okay so if you're able to know. acknowledge then that there is less opportunity afforded to black people but then still that, opportunity it doesn't matter it's the fact yes, that it there is less opportunity which then only follows through as to okay why is there less opportunity in those areas and it's because since businesses were not able to be insured it basically held those communities in a stagnation and they were oh, unable to accumulate wealth they were unable to or businesses were unable to invest in those areas and it prevented the communities from developing the same way that many other communities did. So if that's the case, you're literally acknowledging systemic racism's play at limiting the opportunities for black people. No, man, because the crime is what's causing the lack of ability for these businesses to stay in business in these areas. And the crime is there is the the fault of the criminals and the mothers who are raising the criminals, and it, the mothers are out of control because they're not in they don't have fathers or the fathers are not there, and so it's a it's a vicious circle that you don't want to acknowledge. No, you don't want to. You want to treat them like they are like they are purely victims of their circumstances. No, not at all. I'm not saying they're yes, purely. No, no, no. I'm not saying they're purely victims of their circumstances. I've now said like five different times also that you should make an effort to take responsibility and do as talking, best you can for your life, regardless of your situation. Then but take again, away the, the excuse of racism. No, you're because talking it's out not of both excuse, sides of your mouth. It is an empirically demonstrated fact. And no, no I'm not, not talking out of both sides of my mouth. You yeah, are you very are. easily, no, you're able to say, hey, I should take responsibility and do as best as I can in the situation, while also <laughs> acknowledging that the circumstances you are in is a result of previous historical racist policies. No, man, that's pathetic. Okay. You don't give you're them being an womanly out. minded again. No, you're, you're yes, being you womanly minded. You're treating them like like you're their mother. Oh, I know it's tough for you, baby. No, but I'm you not. gotta try. You're, you're you treating them try. like their mother. You're saying you just gotta just do better, man. Just have some morals, you know. Go out and get a job. You're I don't again, talk like that. You're telling them that they need to go out and pursue a job so that they can afford a better lawyer while you're talking out of each side of your mouth. No, if you you're get also a job, you're probably not gonna Hold no, on. Hold on. You're all no, you're, because I need to finish my sentence here. So you're actually the one talking out of this both sides of your mouth here because you are saying they need to go out and just get a job and do better and take responsibility while simultaneously you are acknowledging that there is not as much opportunity afforded to black people, which if negatively anything, more, affects honestly. them on a statistical rate, which again plays right into what you said, which is, well, maybe they couldn't afford as good of a lawyer. Okay, so um, in all honesty, they have more opportunities. They have too many opportunities to for um, they're they're getting in they're getting this affirmative action thing. They're getting led into schools. It's probably breeding even more resentment because they are given stuff like up the yin yang, and it's only making them more spoiled and more more bad attitude, more out of control. So you're walking us giving them stuff has made. Ago. Us giving them stuff, well, it's the wrong kind of at it. It's the wrong kind of opportunity because it's not deserved opportunity. It's it's special treatment, and some of them could take advantage of that special treatment and make something of themselves. Justice Clarence Thomas did, uh, Ben Carson did, sure, Alan but can West you did, Jesse then Peterson that you're did. Backtracking what you just said a minute ago, you said that I black can acknowledge don't that I backtracked that they're oh they don't have as much opportunity. They have they they've been given too much opportunity. For example, opportunity to buy homes with that they couldn't afford. So you're and that was a backtracking what you said before. Okay, that's yes, fine. I'm backtracking because there's because there's more than one thing going on. Let's let's be serious. 
yeah, there's on one hand they're in poor, they're in uh, crime ridden communities, so there's less opportunities there. They can't build businesses there because it's it's tough to run a business in a low trust society, right? You need high trust society to have a thriving community, and they don't they cannot <laughs> trust one another. But they also have opportunities in schools and affirmative action, and er, people treat them like kings they don't and queens. Have as higher at okay. First of all, they don't have yeah. as high as many opportunities in schools. If we're going to talk yeah. about that again, your schools are funded by your tax dollars. So if you're living in poverty, you also likely have shittier schools because they're not receiving as many as much funding. But you've kind of managed to pivot off of the subject that I'm trying to hold you to, okay, here, which is you are saying that maybe black people are not paying for as good of a lawyer. Now, right. I am granting that to you that maybe. maybe that's the they're case, yeah. but you then have to acknowledge that the reason they don't have as much money is because of a lack of opportunity. No, man, it's not a lack of opportunity. It's blindness to the opportunities. And when you're when you're angry, you're kind of debilitated. You're depressed. You don't feel like working. You do. You feel like doing anything but work. And that happens so frequently. And especially when you're you have opportunity to be paid not to work. Which is which is very frequently the case so what's among kind blacks. Of, what's kind of, what's kind of a, a opportunity that black people have in their communities that they're just not taking? There's all kinds of opportunities to work and all that stuff. Like uh, before what? you answer that question, can I just interject real quick? I just want to remind everybody that um, to uh, attack the uh, the argument and not the uh, not the person when you're making your super chats and sending them in. And I also I'm want cool. to let you guys know that uh, we do only have uh, we already have a super chat for every single minute of the q a so uh if you send any more super chats at this point there's no uh, guarantee that we'll get to it there's no guarantee that we'll get to all of them now i'm just letting you guys know um so please just be mindful of that if you send any more super chats at this point mike young's two dollar super chat is the last guaranteed one that i'm gonna try really hard to get to read get to read so with that go ahead guys thank you guys just so you know uh i'm fine with uh insulting super, super chats that may insult me Understood. i'm fine with super chats yeah. that insult me also i don't really care but my issue here, Hake, is that hey. you seem to really be harping in on this, like they need a better attitude, they need this, they need that. Yeah, Which, that's the huge. It, having a good attitude and taking personal responsibility is a good thing. You should Thank do you. that, but right. that alone is not no enough but. to fix these issues at hand. Because you as, don't know you, that. as you acknowledged in the beginning, we are mm -hmm. all partially victims or results, products of our environment. And if the yeah. environment is extremely fucked over and disproportionately negatively affecting you, that cuts down on your ability to use your personal responsibility to the maximum. That's cutting back on your ability no, to do man. that. Right. I, I get you. I get you. So and what are some opportunities yeah, life, in the black community for black life people? Is, what was your question? What is some opportunity in the black community for black people? Since they can, um, apparently there's so much black, uh, so much opportunity, I mean. There's, well, let me just tell you that there are always opportunities in your life, in, in blacks' lives, and, and everywhere. I acknowledge that, um, yeah, the, the government and all this stuff that the blacks voted for, by the way, they voted for their own destruction in many cases. But um, those, those do cause life to be a little tougher, or sometimes a lot tougher. But the, the environment you grow up in is most directly affected by your mother, Especially, and just your mother or grandmother. It's not the life if, you grow up if in. If you're black you're, you're and your father. Thing. You're pivoting off the question again. Okay, what's you? Well, what I opportunity said is afforded I said to black people? You're saying there's opportunity I'm not gonna all get over specific the place, with you. bro. You're saying there's opportunity all over the place. A lot of people, especially if you're in an urban uh, metropolitan area, then you probably don't own a car, which also cuts down your ability to pursue this opportunity that's far, far away. Because if, the opportunity, be because if the opportunity is lacking in the community, it has negative effects on you as a member of that community. All of this is basically just trying to explain that even if I were to grant you that, yeah, they just don't have as good of a lawyer, which, again, there's no evidence for that, actually. Yeah, that, there is. That is still a result of I'm not the only person who's racism, ever said that. But that is still a result of systemic racism. So you claim, but I don't, I don't agree with that. So – and you haven't you haven't proven it at all. I you have because made, what made I've assertions. done is I've explained very concisely and clearly how there were previous policies that then led to negative outcomes that are still affecting black people today. 
but you haven't demonstrated how that's the primary thing affecting them. And you it's, haven't it's demonstrated that not. their attitude is the primary thing affecting them. I don't. I don't have. To be, in all honesty, there's no way to demonstrate it unless you delve into every ah. everyone's lives. So you have an unfalsifiable when, claim because you're basing right. them off uh, mostly on your feelings. Whereas no, I have an true. Yes, Everybody no, knows this I have is an true. empirical claim, which is based on statistics, uh, decades of research and data, and literal historical fact. You tell me which one who's who here sounds more female minded, man. You're literally <laughs> saying like I have a feeling, you know, wow, I feel so like sexist. it's this way. I really <laughs> feel like this is the case, man. I can't really prove it, but you know, just trust me, bruh. I have a tingle no, in my people, butt. That's what you're people, saying right now. People know the truth. And I did answer your question. They there clearly are, don't, and you're I, proof I of that it. they don't. No, hold on. I answered your question that there are opportunities in one's life. There are always opportunities in one's life. I'm not going to get specific with it. I'm not, I'm not living in there. You have to see the opportunities for yourself, and God will open your eyes. So um, I hope that God no, opens you, your eyes that like policies have uh, you know negative effects, even if they're done. Do away you even with, believe they in still God? Have negative effects. Uh, unfortunately, you're making me doubt the existence of God even more. This conversation with the the we, painful appeal to intuition uh, the entire time has been very very silly. But I would just re like to know because I know that the debate's going to be ending soon, but I would like to know why or how having a bad attitude or not taking enough responsibility affects your likelihood of getting sentenced to death or your likelihood of getting a longer prison sentence. Is it just I on the lawyer? That already. Wait, wait. Is I answered it just that. I'll repeat on the it, lawyer? Yeah, I answered that and I'll, I'm happy to repeat it. Because when you have a bad attitude, you have less opportunities because you're cutting off, you're burning bridges and all kinds of stuff. You uh, don't feel like working. You don't, you're not making money. And then you also commit crimes in the first place, which they disproportionately commit crimes like crazy. And then you're, you're not going to be able to afford, afford a good lawyer or you're not going to have a good sense the good sense to behave properly in court. So all kinds of things factor into that. Let me give and you it's another quite reasonable. example then. Since Go ahead. You're, so you're, I answered then, it clearly, right? Okay, I yes, it. you've answered it, but in a very unfalsifiable type of way. So I know, there but was it's... a study done in 2010 also where they took mock jurors, okay? So this has nothing to do with actual lawyers or attorneys or anything like that, okay? They took mock jurors, and mm -hmm. they were all given the same evidence from a fictional robbery case, okay? And keep in mind that these mock jurors included white people and black people, because again, I'm talking about systems, not people being racist, but... They were all given the same evidence from a fictional robbery case, uh, but then showed alternative security camera footage depicting either a light-skinned or dark-skinned suspect. Jurors were more likely to evaluate ambiguous, race-neutral evidence against the dark-skinned suspect as incriminating and more likely to find the dark-skinned suspect guilty. Do you think that that's any indicator that some people might have a bias that is contributing to the system and the negative results affecting black people today? That, that could be, and I'll tell you why that is. I'll tell you why they ha might have that bias. Mm -hmm. Because they've had experiences and they've seen it, that blacks commit more of the, more of the robberies. So you're contradicting uh, per yourself capita. again. You're contradicting yourself. You started no, I'm not. Out, yes, you are. You started out by making, or not making fun, but you started out of mentioning very heavily about black people have resentment towards white people. And right. now you're saying, well, white people just have their own experiences, and that's why they're kind of racist towards black people, you know? It's not racist. You're trying though. to justify one while harping on the other. But I'm not justifying it. I'm saying that, that, um, that people take... It's it's consider it's kind of like a risk assessment, or and and people do uh, they get traumatized by uh, by their experiences? Maybe black people and, are traumatized by cops or their experiences. Uh, cops are traumatized by blacks, believe me. Everything but, you're saying could be equally applied to the black people, which you I know that's to why claim it's not just their that's, their resentment and their bad attitude. Right, and so that's this is why you're not talking about systemic racism. You're talking about this personal. Uh, uh, ra personal bias racism, right? This is this is why it's not racism at its root. It's a judgment. People judge things rightly or wrongly based on what they've been told or what they've seen themselves. And that's not racism. It, and that's why blacks are the most guilty of this thing because they're told they can't be racist. And so, so it o only it only <laughs> leads them into more more self destruction. So let let me back. Let me try to understand this. First yeah. of all, as I said up in my opening, is that systems are made up of people. So subconscious. I know, but we weren't talking about systematic. We're yeah, talking well, about systemic. I know, but I'm, what I'm saying is that right. systems like the 
jurors or whatever are still made right. up of people. But it doesn't mean that they're all malicious racist. It just means that there are subconscious biases that can negatively affect the outcomes in this system as well. So when you're telling me they have a bad attitude and then you're mm -hmm. saying, well, it's because the reason the mock jurors were more likely to evaluate ambiguous race neutral evidence against the dark skinned suspect as incriminating. You're saying that's just because they all had a bad experience with black people. We all we all know that blacks commit more of this this type of crime. So give me a break. But, but that doesn't prove that in this case the that black doesn't person, make it racist. This doesn't that makes prove it, that in this yeah. case the black person was actually guilty. Right, you're right. I get it, and so that's why that's why it follows that blacks are both more criminal, but they're also more likely to be framed for things or falsely convicted. I I totally get that. Who are sorry? They're more blacks are more likely to be both. Uh, guilty of these things, but also framed and falsely convicted. Okay. I'm just trying yeah. to understand how you are able to rationalize any of this with it's just on the black people for having a bad attitude. Well, in that case, it's not it's not really their fault. But I'm saying it's not racism. It's a judgment that they themselves uh, are more often guilty of than the whites. Do you think if somebody makes a judgment based on yeah. somebody's skin color— that is not grounded in anything other than their skin color, that that could, not is, but could be racist. Um, if that were to happen, that that could be possible, but nobody judges anybody just based purely on their skin color because, like I told you, it's based on what they've seen happen with that so-called skin color. Okay, so are it's you based then saying on, that black people— It's based people, on a judgment. So are you saying that if black people are, quote-unquote, traumatizing uh, cops— do you think that <laughs> yeah. any of that is because maybe the black people had a negative experience with cops? Yeah, because they're they're brainwashed to hate cops. No, not brainwashed to hate cops. I'm wondering they if are. you think that this or their opinion of cops has anything to do with their experience with cops, not what they saw on Twitter, their actual experience with cops. Yeah, because your your mind is very powerful in your perception of what you went through. And w blacks have a darkened, angry mind, and they're not able to see clearly. Are you trolling right now? No, I'm not. Here, let me, let me give no, no, you no, a let statistic. Let me just summarize this really quick because you're being so fucking incoherent. It's embarrassing. Hey, First, hey, you're hey. saying, hey, you know, the jurors, they, they're they not racist or anything. This isn't racist or anything, dude. It's they're, not racist. They're, they're just it's, uh, basing it's their— It's a misjudgment. They're just basing their quote-unquote misjudgment on their own experiences. So you're making mm -hmm. an argument to more or less justify the juror's decision to— I'm not justifying it. So you, really, you're not justifying the it. decision? No. No, I wouldn't—why I would. Why would I justify a false conviction? Because you're saying that, well, it's based on their own experience and everybody knows black people commit more crime. Right. But that wouldn't make—that wouldn't cause me to justify some a black getting falsely convicted. Okay. You're making assumptions about what, I, what I'm saying. So I just but find it a little explain. bit strange that you're statistic. so quick to base this on their experiences, and that's why they're thinking this. But why then you're else saying, you but then you're saying black people are brainwashed to dislike cops. Why couldn't the same exact thing be said for black people who have a negative opinion of cops? Could that be a result of their negative experience with cops? Right. Yes, it could be. But it's also their negative behavior and attitude toward cops that causes them to have these negative experiences because blacks in San Francisco, here's a statistic for you. I think it was, it was found that blacks are eight to nine times more likely to resist arrest in San Francisco than non-blacks up there, I mean, do you which want to would just lead go down the to, same which would lead path? to more of that police brutality stuff that you imagine. Do you want to just go case. down the same path? Do you think that maybe if you're living your life in a community that seems to be more adversarial with cops, that, like you said, you might have a worse uh, assumption of cops and be more right. likely to make uh, ignorant and bad decisions when being arrested? Right. Yep. So it's time for responsibility, not it's time for black reform, not police reform. But you never hear about black reform. Because we want to pretend that blacks are the victims. Give me a break. No, I don't want to solely pretend that blacks are the victims, but I need you and people listening to be able to acknowledge the systemic inequalities here that are affecting this. I mean, it may, there have, have, a there minor have, it may have a minor effect. I grant you that. Okay, 
So there have yeah. literally been studies that have controlled for the lawyer situation as well, and they found that solely on skin color, there is a massive gap between the demographic factors when nice. it comes to sentencing. Okay. So doesn't, That doesn't tell me the whole story, though. It doesn't need to. What it tells you is the crucial details that you need to know to assess whether or not this is systemic racism or not. No, is the man. person black? Why, is there you, a why do you need this racism thing to exist? I don't need it to exist. I literally am you demonstrating like you as best as exist. I can, which is if there is a black person who gets a longer sentence than, or, or excuse me, longer sentence than a white person who committed the same crime, why is that same happening? Crime. We've been why that. is that occurring? We it depends on where they are. You because can't just they're say in... it's the lawyer. They control okay, for these variables. It, all right, let's 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 say they're in a community that's had a lot of problems with gang violence or some type of some type of crime that's and they need to crack down extra hard on that crime whereas in a white community it's kind of rare to have this thing and so we they don't have the 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 punishments in place for for these things so because these things are happening crime all in the community black people get longer sentences to they sort say of make we an need to stop this them? crime we need to yeah they there's all kinds of different things so you're going describing on, a system right now that is disproportionately negatively affecting black people Right, and it's their own fault. So you're describing to me systemic racism. No, it's not racism. Two minutes left, guys. It's what you would call racism because you're blind and you don't want to get to the root of the issue. You want to just look at the surface of the issue and say, oh, because it's affecting the blacks more disproportionately, therefore it's racism. I'm trying no, to get to the root of the issue literal, to solve it. No, what there there is is that there's biases that exist here that – when you control for every other factor besides the person's skin color, Not that true. plays a role in the negative effects that they are experiencing in regards to our criminal justice system. And now you're, you're saying, well, maybe, for it's every other they have, maybe it's because they have more crime. You know, maybe they're trying to make an example out of them or something, which is ultimately out still systemic racism. No, it's not. No, there's, man. There's a there's a, a, it's not a theory, but there's a, a way of argumentation or a way of reasoning. OK, I know people really mm -hmm. over here at the manly minds really like the logic and the reasoning, which says nice. that if you're presented with two options, it makes more sense to go with the option that is more uh, believable and is more right. empirically grounded. So for me yeah. and for people listening who aren't already on your side or whatnot, I think <laughs> that everybody can agree What's more likely, what's an easier thing to believe? That there were previous policies that still have results today, just like there were previous policies in America that still have results today for everybody. There were previous policies that still have results today that are resulting in disproportionate uh, effects, negative effects for black people, like the poverty gap, for example, or actually that doesn't really have much effect. And it's just that a bunch of black people have bad attitudes uh, and I can't really prove it, but, you know, it's just – if you just look around and talk to a black you can't person, prove you'll it. just know it, bro. No, no, I'm comparing you don't, the two. You don't know that they don't – you don't I'm know. This will be your last have... word. Hey, hey, this will be your last word before we go to the Q&A, okay? I'm comparing right, the two cool. options. Yeah, comparing the two options means you look at – you look at – because your reality is you did not control for every other factor besides the skin color. And so <laughs> what you're saying is is not even logical. No, we, we've controlled for every relevant factor. And it's no, only haven't. the skin color that differs, and that plays a crucial role in the decision-making of a jury or a judge and the length of the prison sentence that they receive. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay. Go ahead and just have, take Very a, nice female-minded response. Wrap it up so we can go to Q&A. All Kate, right. Do you want to say a last word real quick so we can go to Q&A? Okay. Uh, he opened. How, how, long, how long do just, I have? Just, just take a minute or two real okay, quick. Cool. Just say a, 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 a closing so we can uh, go to Q&A. All right. Well, well, thank you very much, Hunter. This has been fun. It, it blew by. And thank you, Kaz, and thank you, Chatters. Uh, I, I gleefully anticipate your super chats. They're always fun. But um, the pretense is that, the, that these so-called racist policies and the racist judges and racist juries are cracking down extra heavy on the blacks and not on the whites. But it's not reality. It's, it's leaving out uh, big holes in the reality of the situation. They leave out the sense of responsibility that blacks so often are lacking. And we've seen case after case after case of it, anecdote after anecdote. And you could even pull up statistics if uh, you were Dr. John R. Lott Jr. 
or a Vincent James or somebody who is really into statistics and stuff like that. <laughs> Honorable men. Um, but the hatred for, towards whites, I say that that's not even racism because the root is not the root is not the the skin color or the judgment of based on skin color it's because this diversity thing breeds resentment and with communism which is a divide and conquer type of atheistic mentality they want to use the natural fissures in society where you see some families already naturally have a um enmity toward one another people don't get along with another with each other when you have the extra thing difference of the outside the outside races then you think oh it's because i'm black or oh it's because i'm white it feeds it feeds your mind and it feeds this division so diversity i say is a weakness and not a strength but um people can overcome it if they if they have love and and rather rather than hate overcome the anger and look at yourself don't be so quick to judge others all right i thank appreciate you so much. it can I have a? Oh, thank you so much. Can I have a closing statement, Tell? Um, I'll yeah, but I'll just have to give it to him. I'll have to give him uh, the last word at the end of it. Go ahead. Oh, he needs to get the last word again. I thought that we're doing closing statements. Um, I just was trying to give him the last word because you had the opening. He can go um, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll just give. I'll be very quick. I'll be quick and brief, and I can stay extra time to make sure we get through the super chats. But uh, at the end of the day, um, I think that Hake uh, is trying to create a dichotomy here that does not need to exist. He is basically saying. Well, if we're going to acknowledge systemic racism, that means that we have to forget about personal responsibility, which is simply not true. You can have personal responsibility while simultaneously being victimized by a system that is disproportionately uh, delivering negative results to you on the basis of your skin color. These two things can exist uh, side by side. In fact, I think the acknowledgement of systemic racism while simultaneously having personal responsibility is the most logical thing that you should believe at the end of the day. But as I said a million times throughout the debate, policies have effects. I'm pretty sure everybody listening who likes uh, Hake's content would say, yeah, the Immigration Act of 1965 had a lot of negative downstream effects, bruh. So we're able to acknowledge all the time that policies can have negative effects, downstream negative effects. And when we're talking about things like redlining, there is a reason why, to this day, we still see massive gaps when it comes to wealth, generational wealth, upward mobility, and opportunity with black people and in black communities. We cannot simply blame all of this and say that generations and generations of black people just didn't have enough uh, responsibility and all had bad attitudes when there is obviously something much larger at play here. I would like to talk about the root of the issue. I'm sorry that this conversation didn't really get as far as I would have liked it to, but either way, that's my closing statement. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter. We'll talk again, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Sure. Hey, are you good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So we will go ahead and kick it into the q and I will start the clock as soon as I read this first question. This is a first question from uh, 0022 for $2. He wants me to tell Hunter that the R word is an anti-white slur. Indeed. We're talking about racist. Oh, racist? Yeah. Apparently. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Facts. The next the next super chat is from Rational Right for 199. Hake with the good hair. Keep it up. Thank Keep you, man. Appreciate it. Shout out to the chat. And another 199 from Rational Right. He says, Most blacks are angry. That's the real issue. Yeah. To which I would like to know, okay, how do you know this? And are you able to demonstrate this with anything other than your feelings and your own intuition? To me, this sounds just like the cringy CRT Libcocks who say, well, just look around, you know, angry white men. They're just a big problem. Angry white men. And to which I would say that, too, is cringe. When you look at the how 96 percent voted for Barack Obama twice just because he's black, you don't think that's rooted in some type of weird racial resentment? Uh, no, why would that be rooted in race, racial resentment? Why, why would why would any race vote ninety six percent twice for one black candidate? Give me Didn't a break. Did Trump get the largest vote amongst white people? Two he times did, in a but row? not ninety six. I wish he got ninety six percent of what the white vote. We would we would have <laughs> overcome any shenanigans. That would have been awesome. All right, nice. Um, uh, 0022 for ten dollars. He says. 
it's not the racism. It's not that racism doesn't exist. It's an anti-white slur, regardless of definition. Yeah, It would be like arguing if N-word exists rather than arguing that it's an anti-black slur. It's it's worse to be it's worse for a white to be called a racist than it is for a black to be called the n the so called n word, because if a white gets called a racist and people believe it, which most of the time they will, he gets fired. If a white calls a black the n word, the white gets fired, not the black. So, what a mess. Under, uh, yeah, th this is I, I don't really have anything to say. You can go into the next one. Gotcha. For uh, from double O twenty two for five dollars, he says. Hunter's arguments are just anti-white slurs. Can he make a point without racial slurs? Uh, yeah, so this again is a massive cope where instead of confronting the fact that there are uh, there's decades of data, which all indicates the realism and the results of systemic racism, instead uh, you want to basically curl up and get triggered and hide in your safe space like a little snowflake and say that actually you just don't like white people, boo-hoo, wah-wah. So you sound very womanly-minded. But you don't love blacks either because you're giving them an out. You're giving them an, ex an excuse. No, I'm not. You're, giving, you are, you're feeding nope, them you blame and victimhood. Me, even though I literally said the opposite throughout the entire conversation. Thank you for demonstrating that you either weren't listening or just already forgot. I don't know. No, you were talking out of both sides of your mouth, man. But anyway. So were you. <laughs> and right. I was not, but you actually were, my dude. All right. All right. Moving on from 0022 again for $5. He says, the term Karen is an anti-white slur. Hunter knows its Western names, which are discouraged and white erased. Mm. Karen, there's no information or anything indicating that people named Karen face uh, disproportionate uh, uh, or, or negative results when applying for jobs. But you know what I will say is that systemic racism is not the only thing that exists. There also is something like systemic sexism, where men are disproportionately given longer prison sentences for the same crime committed by women. So when women commit crimes, the same crimes that men then go on to commit, men almost always get longer prison sentences. So we can talk about other systems that uh, uh, deliver disproportionate negative results for other people as well. It's not just systemic racism, though. There can be it's, systemic sexism. That's true, but sexism doesn't exist. It's not That's not the issue, man. You're looking at the surface. Gotcha. Nice. I'll, from 0022 for $2, Hunter is anti-white. Or is an anti-white? So, Forgive me. once again, and this is kind of how I can tell that um, uh, I did decently enough in a debate is when there is absolutely no <laughs> indication that, or anybody even attempts to try and refute my points. Instead, they just make fun of me and call me anti-white. I don't know how what I said was anti-white. My argument was specifically uh, against the idea that white people are racist. Instead, I was talking about systems that deliver disproportionate negative results regardless of the intent. So again, what, this is a massive cope. What are you, if you don't mind my asking, Hunter? What do you mean, what am I? What are you? Like, what type of white are you? Or what are you? <laughs> I don't know, I'm a white guy. That's it? Okay. Yeah, because I don't find, I don't take like <laughs> su super big uh, uh, solace in the color of my skin. I'm, I'm white, I'm half European, part blah, blah, blah. Like, no, I don't. I don't give a shit. He wants to know what flavor you are. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. From John WX25 for $5. Hunter, you talk with such guilt. Are you now or ever been a racist? You speak as if poor blacks can do anything on their own, so they need Hunter. Um. Again, <laughs> is every single rebuttal to what I said and the data that I provided just hunter you sound sad in your trigger lol like this is this i don't even know what to say to that no i don't have white guilt by any means i don't think that white people are responsible for systemic racism i think that systemic racism is largely a result of negative policies that were instituted a long time ago this has nothing to do with white people gotcha and from lord dibby for 40 i'm sorry lord dibby 42 for five dollars he says hunter where did you get your information it's 2022, not 1950. Your arguments don't hold any weight in the world we live in today. Stand up. Uh, very interesting that Why? all of my information came from studies that came from uh, virtually the very early 2000s, uh, like one or two of them, but most of them were done in 2016, 17, 18, 19, and even into the current year as well. So 
you're lying that's chatter that's when they that's when they really ramped up this anti-white propaganda these academics very interesting just anything you can the mental <laughs> gymnastics anything to just avoid the actual it's reality problem. It's no, reality it's the mental because gymnastics, really you, dude. You're, you're, no, you're because you're pretending that this thing is the major cause for black problems. Give turns me out a that break. there's a lot of empirical evidence to prove that. No, there is for those of us that actually there's a really good quote I'd like to quote really quickly. Go for Facts it. don't care about your feelings. It's a oh, really gosh. excellent quote pre uh, prevent, uh, presented, excuse me, by Ben Shapiro, and I think that it's very relevant here. There are facts. facts there are facts, facts that determine or facts that uh, uh, support my claim. And there are not facts to support what Hake says. There are there's feelings plenty of, to support what Hake says. There's plenty of facts and reality and truth behind what I'm saying. You're you, you're using cherry picked facts to distract from the larger truth, which is what liberals do. You're using cherry picked feelings to try and avoid the fact that facts don't support your ludicrous conclusions. Whatever, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Gotcha. All right. From Javier or Xavier Relish for two dollars. Do you love black people, Hunter and Hake? Do you love yes. black people? Yes. I do love black people. If I love anybody, I love black people. They're very entertaining and uh, they're cool. They call into my show. Roger that. And from um, Sho Suguyu, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your last name, for $5, Penny for the Guy. Good new sub. Thank you. Salty's on. Amen. Konnichiwa. Roger that. And from Joe Schwartz for one ninety nine, he says, "What's your favorite video game and why?" Ooh, Duke Nukem, because I liked playing it in high school. Wow. There's a <laughs> there's Way this bad. really new cool game called uh, Soy Latte, and uh, basically you have to virtually make as many soy lattes as possible and see how much soy you can consume within a thirty second uh, time frame. It's really cool. I'd recommend it. Are you in your 20s or 30s, if you don't mind my asking? You don't have to answer, but I'm just I'm curious. I'm in my 20s. Nice, man. All right. And from Lord Bibby for Lord Bibby 42 for $20, he says, Systemic r racism exists, yet we have the LeBron James, Oprah, Oprah's, Obama's, Jay-Z's, Cardi B's. Hunter, what in the world? Sure. Boy. So even back to— Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. One second. He's not done. Uh, oh. The U.S. props up blacks and simps to them. If they aren't famous, they get free handouts. So this is actually, first of all, no one's getting free handouts, but this is actually more an indication of systemic racism because if the country is overall supportive of black people, but they're still having these disparate, uh, disparate negative results from certain systems, this is again indications that there are systems at play and not intentional racist uh, people trying to screw over black people. That's the first thing. So that actually proves my point. Thank you. Second of all, if we're going to talk about famous musicians or whatnot, even during times of Jim Crow, when there was blatant racism and discrimination against black people, uh, you would still see people who would rise to the top of the music charts, who were uh, playing you know, music. They were very popular and whatnot. Being popular or finding success here and there does not change the fact that there can still be systemic inequalities. They were better off in those days. They were moral. They had their families together. You know, they may have been poorer. I think America in general was uh, less well off. But now we have ill-gotten gain of women working and women running the show. I mean, it's I'm not at all. I, obviously, that's wrong, and they were not better off then. Uh, but I think that morally I can, they were. They had their well, families I think that I can, together. I think I can come to like a they very were less criminal too. I think that I can come to like a bit of a common ground here for you that maybe okay. the only benefit of Jim Crow and segregation then was that they were kept away from people like you. <laughs> come on, they would love me. All right, let's move on. From Brandon M for five dollars, he says. I have studies and statistics that show how segregated schools perform better due to racial comfort. Studies and statistics, studies and statistics. Nice. That's very nice. Yeah, thankfully I wasn't just saying study, study, study. I was actually citing the data that I had and uh, the conclusions that it came to. And again, you can read all of the data that I cited. But they come to false conclusions. That's my argument. Well, thankfully and your intuition and out... your, your feelings never come to, uh, to wrong conclusions, of course. Oh, no, I could, I could be wrong. Well, you are, but okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on. And from the Herman Cain Awards for $5, he says, um, Oprah is rich, therefore racism doesn't exist. It's something you'd have to be nearly comatose to believe in earnest. Very womanly thinking. Based. She, it, just because she hates white people so much, especially now that, that she's able to backstab them like this, 
uh, doesn't make racism a real thing. Hating whites or hating blacks doesn't make it racist. You've never seen the color purple, have you? <laughs> no, but I've seen parts of it. Is that the one where? Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From Lord Dibby, 42 for $5 says, Hunter, you should focus less on big words and more on substance. Get outdoors and see reality. Uh, thankfully, I didn't really use very many big words here. I, I feel as though I was talking like a pretty common everyday Joe. Uh, but to the chatter, I would recommend that they take their own advice and maybe go touch grass. All right. And the insult of the night that you say you went to hear from <laughs> fuck Google for $5. I don't even want to read this. Go ahead. <laughs> it's obviously against me. Please bring it on. Hunter is just like a woman. Childish, illogical. Hake is a logical guy, a man's man. Uh, I really Thank find you. A, yeah, that's that's a nice compliment for you, Hake. But again, we're seeing somebody else now appealing to their own feelings uh, because somebody point. else is basically jerking off their feelings. It's very sad. And ultimately, <laughs> if anybody's, again, thinking womanly here, it is definitely Hake and his defenders because Hake provided no evidence. He didn't really even provide any coherent arguments. He mainly just said it's all on black people to do better, lol, uh, which is coming from a place of intuition, feelings, and ultimately a very womanly-minded thing. All right. That was not the one. Uh, it's from the same guy. That's why I thought it was. Um, from Lord Dibby42 for $5, says, Hake, if Hunter reads it, then it must be true. What a mess. Shake my head. Yeah, what a mess. And I guess if Hake just asserts it based on his, uh, his gut feeling, then it must be true. I'm wearing a T-shirt that says knowledge is poison because... <clears throat> knowledge can puff you up and make you think that you know and you don't really know what you think you know this is a trap that college students and people in general fall into i mean they become flat earthers and all kinds of insane things uh, knowledge puffs up but love builds up and we need a return to responsibility i mean i would totally understand being against uh, uh knowledge and uh, you know any kind of modern day intellectual thought because every single version of that contradicts the claims you're making so again when you when you reach a point where you're so like fatally wrong you have no choice but to just reject all knowledge because all of the knowledge is proving you incorrect so i understand the cope but either way yeah you didn't prove anything all right and from Brandon M for $5. I believe he's saying, if poverty is such an issue, why do high class black areas still have higher crime than lower class white areas? Uh, first of all, I would love to see a statistic on that because I don't believe that's true. Second of all, uh, this is demonstrated even with when white Italians, for example, first immigrated to the country, uh, they lived in poor areas and they had higher crime rates at the time. Poverty is always heavily correlated with crime rates. Yeah, correlation is not causation. And Italians are, I'm not sure if they're white. If you want to talk about whites. correlation doesn't equal causation, then I hope you're Thank willing you. to bite the bullet that if they have a bad, if black people have a bad attitude, that does not cause the negative circumstances they're in. No, but it causes problems for them, undeniably. So you're arguing that causation. Huge. Attitude, <laughs> attitude is everything. We all know this. So decades of research which all looks at different communities showing that when the poverty rate is higher the crime rate goes up you're saying well yeah but that's not causation that that's just correlation but you're mm -hmm. saying that you have some kind of intuitive knowledge that it's actually causation from black people having a bad attitude when someone is quote unquote poor sometimes it tells you something about them when someone is criminal that tells you something about them usually it has to do more with them than their circumstances all right. Uh, From uh, Google for $5, another insult for Hunter. He says you're feminine and cringe, and he wants to know where your chin is. That's uh, not an insult. That's that not, was love. That's, that's kind of not really a very – I was definitely uh, expecting something a little bit more savage than that. I'm going to go <laughs> ahead and guess that whoever commented that does not have a real picture of themselves and their, uh, as their profile picture. All right. Let's Am move I correct, on from that. Kaz? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just reading them off the list. Uh, we have shout out to Shy Show Nav in the chat, one of our illustrious moderators who collects the uh, site, the super chats for me and uh, compiles them into a list so I can read them very easily. So he is the best. You guys should show him some love in the chat if you are there. Um, from Lord Divi42 for $10, he says, Do blacks getting longer prison sentences have anything to do with prior crimes and fighting the police? 
or is it just a myth like in the case of Georgia, Florida? Um, I'm not sure what they're talking about with the Georgia, Florida thing, but the, George Floyd. Are they talking about George? George Floyd? They're talking about George Floyd. Yeah, well, the the uh, uh, the data that I cited from the U.S. Sentencing Commission accounted for all of that and found that even when the variables were virtually the same, uh, black people were still sentenced to longer prison sentences. The only difference between those those two groups in the study was the person's skin color. No, there's also the difference of location and all kinds of other differences. You're not you're not being honest. Or you're just being ignorant, willfully ignorant, or whatever. I'm sure you're maybe not even can, willfully ignorant. Maybe you're, think, uh, maybe your feelings I think you just can help see. kind of further uh, elucidate the 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 uh, mishaps in the data. You have to have a whole conversation on controls in scientific studies. Yeah. All right, let's move on. From uh, Fernandez T for ten dollars, he says, uh, "One would think if your race got a longer sentence, it would make you do less crime. It mm -hmm. works on some cultures, but not blacks." If that's true, Hunter, uh, that's not at all how this works. If you think that just like somebody getting a longer prison sentence means that like you're like, oh, I'm black. I better just do less crime. Like, no, this this is just not how it works. A lot of the times, be people, wise. a lot of the times people think that having heavier punishment for crime can try to reduce the crime. And in some instances that might work, but it's certainly not that cut and dry. 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh my God, you guys are <laughs> tripping. All right, we have 18 more questions on nice. the list. <laughs> Thank you, Super um, Chatters. Where were we? Uh, uh, like I said, me? guys, there's no guarantee that we're going to get through all these. I'm about to get to the point where I warned you, and then uh, we'll see where we get. Uh, but like I said, if you're still sending in Super Chats, there's no guarantee that you're going to get get it read. There's not going to be any kind of uh, ref refund for those. Um, where were we? Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, from Lord Dibby, 42 for $5. Hunter, do you have to go cook dinner? Happy birthday, Hank. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I turned 40 in July. It's my birthday. Uh, as far as the <laughs> cooking dinner thing, uh, no, I'm good. Thank you, though. All right. From Mike Young, welcome to Extra Juicy. Juicy! From Lonesome One for $10. Hunter, do you think it's possible? that you misinterpret the data and pick your studies suitable to your position. There's a reason this debate still exists today. May I suggest John R. Lott? Yes, John there's, R. Lott Jr. There's PhD. currently a debate still existing right now on whether or not the earth is flat or round. No matter how much data there is to support something, there's always going to be a couple chuckle fucks like Hake and his followers who end up uh, just denying the reality because it doesn't fit with their feelings and their preconceived notions. Now, if I was just using one single study to try and uh, uh, prove my entire point, then maybe that criticism would be a little bit more valid. Thankfully for me, I have decades of data and various different studies all over the country uh, which support my claim. This is not just one study. So no, unless every single study is uh, wrong, then no. I, it's very, I, I would beg anybody to uh, who's listening to think do you think that every single study is wrong or do you think that maybe it's just you that's wrong are you familiar with john r lott jr phd crime prevention research uh i'm not too familiar with him i think i may have heard the name before yeah read him read him some more honestly i think you will enjoy it no, even if you disagree I'm, with him i i appreciate that but he's not a flat earther well, no, and he's, he's not a chuckle blank well, knowledge is poison, so I think I'll, I'll I'll abstain. But thank you. Are you serious? Come on. No, this is me being being sincere with you. Check them out, man. All right, let's. But move you on. don't have to. Uh, from J S Urban Adventures for five dollars, um, and I'm not going to read that the way that you wrote that. Um, from <laughs> he says, uh, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson proves systemic racism has been made real but not the way Hunter thinks. What is she? Uh, a different word for her first name. <laughs> I'm not Katanji too... Onyika. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with what that's uh, that's getting at, but he's saying that uh, that her um, her appointment is an example of systemic racism. Oh, okay. So it's so systemic racism does exist then, only when it just supports your agenda. That's what I would ask the chatter. Gotcha. All right, two dollars from Mike Young. Hunter, piece of advice: get over the white guilt. 
Yeah. And I mean, I don't know, like this, again, this, these are just assumptions because people don't have actual arguments to defend their, uh, their dipshit opinions. So to that chatter, I don't know, a piece of advice, go find your dad. That's nice. Right. I want to also just announce that there is going to be a open mic after show in the discord server on the modern day debate discord server, uh, immediately following the show as well as my, uh, after show, uh, Hake is going to be joining me there as well. Uh, so we will hopefully see you guys there after the show. So I'm just going to mention that. Uh, from $5 from DM, show us how systematic racism continues to the, to the high amounts of contribute. So sorry. Show us how systematic racism contributes to the high amounts of rape in these types of communities. Uh, this falls right back into the crime statistics and how heavily crime is correlated with uh, uh, poor outcomes. So, or poor community, sorry. So when we see higher rates of poverty, we're going to see higher rates of violent crime across the board. But again, we've already seen also that when you implement more progressive tax rates and open up more um, uh, uh, opportunity and make sure that you benefit people's employment, maybe adding in stronger social safety nets, you see the crime rate go down because crime is heavily, heavily correlated by poverty. But your what was your answer to Brandon M's prior super chat? I happen to remember Brandon M name because this crime thing does not explain away the vast disproportionate uh murder rates and everything else it actually does because have. A no lot it doesn't of, because yeah it does he made the point well hold, hold on let me just finish he made the point that uh black so-called higher income communities have higher crime rates than white lower income communities that's what not, was your answer to that? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, what you that said was. To that. I would want to see some kind of evidence of that because, again, it sounds like just an assertion. But Read I don't believe. A lot, man. I don't, don't believe so that that's true, ignorant. considering the fact that there are again studies which have shown where white people, if they're living in areas that are more poor, they too commit high rates of crime. Right, but get out of your safe space and read some John Lott and and a uh, real Vincent James, man. Don't right. be so Vincent, willfully ignorant. I know. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, known academic genius Vincent James. You're right. I'll, I'll go read up. And John R. Lott Jr., PhD, crime research. Well, I don't want to plug it on Modern Day Debate Show, but anyway. All right. Also, if I could just, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to add. Sorry, but uh, also a large reason that there are a big reason for the higher crime rates in those areas also is because of gang related violence. Uh, and again, gangs are unfortunately a natural or not natural, but gangs are a pretty common thing to come from communities that are disproportionately poor don't have Fatherless. don't have as many fathers yes yep. uh and also have an adversarial relationship with the police all results of systemic racism oh gosh anyway all right thank you so much moving on uh from uh lene lene two for 1999 do you think that we have over focused on how these racial groups have gotten different results versus how we can change these results. Yeah. Second, would you accept a solution that would disproportionately affect black people? Is that a question for me? He, okay. I think so, yeah. Do you think that we have over focused on how these racial groups have gotten different results versus how we can change these results? And second, would you accept a solution that would disproportionately affect black people? Um, I think that there should there can be solutions that um, what do you mean disproportionately like disproportionately benefit the black community? I think that we need to be striving towards a more equal playing field to ensure that everybody has um, the same ability to live out these this country's founding uh, um, values and pursue their own happiness. Um, a really good thing that I, I bring up a lot, actually, is Donald Trump had a really good idea. And unfortunately, it didn't really bear out, didn't really work. But um he had a, he was definitely on the on the right track with these opportunity zones with incentivizing businesses to open up in these poor areas to try and uh, stimulate the economic growth of those communities and also try and provide more jobs. So I think that there are absolutely policies that can be implemented to to benefit these uh, these poor black communities. And like I said, it didn't really work. But Donald Trump actually was on on the right path there. We have like a lack of truth. It's not a lack of opportunity that blacks are suffering from. It's a lack of truth that they're suffering from. And like I said, that that anger that we most people, period, uh, suffer from. But different people have uh, different um, symptoms from from that root anger. So, yeah, uh, liberals do have some facts, but they come up with the wrong solutions. Female minded. So wrong. 
All right. From Anomic Anomic report. I agree, Hank. <laughs> from Anomic Anomic for 499, he says, um, uh, DC public schools spend uh, $3,115 per student. The district is one. Number one? Like failing or something like that? I don't know. I would think that that's that that issue that district is failing irreg irregardless, which is not a word, of the amount of money that they're spending. What a shame! Baltimore has that problem too. There's a guy who's uh, a guy named Giovanni Patterson who's trying to sue the the Baltimore schools, I think, because they're like blowing and wasting the money and not really serving the kids. It's such a bad situation. Hunter is right that the schools are failing, but it's not because of the poor poverty. All right. From Mike Young for $5. Hunter, get over your anger so you can get over fear to tell black people the truth. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. More, uh, more petty insults that are not based on any kind of actual attempt at deconstructing my argument, which again shows that whoever left that comment is, uh, is coping. They're very sad, apparently. And they feel the need to somehow claim that I'm angry, which, again, why are you so like, why are you so uh, in tune with other people's supposed emotions? Seems very womanly. Only a liberal, only a, an angry person would be a liberal. <laughs> All right. From two dollars, two dollars from fuck Google says and declares Hake wins. Thank you. The opinions of fuck Google do not coincide with the opinions of modern day debate <laughs> from mango t for 7.99 says hunter would you hire a person from low-income neighborhoods nobody would because they are angry and wicked um mango t said that yeah really so if there them. was somebody who had like a, a you know good work ethic and they wanted to uh they wanted to work and get a job yeah i would not discriminate on the basis of low-income areas and again, the fact that you're saying because they're in low income areas that makes them wicked seems just really backwards to me. It's very anti American. Gotcha. That's a, a familiar name. I think you might know this person, Carissa Avalone. You know this person? Hey, hey my wife is here to defend me. Yes, finally, I'm oh. saved. No, she's she's on my side. You do know her. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Five dollars. Carissa says, lawyers have nothing to do with sentencing. Study controlled, study controlled for indictments. Judge. Judging based only on skin, regardless of experience, is still racism. But they're not judging based only on skin, Carissa and and uh, Mr. Avalon as well. They're not judging based solely on skin. It's ridiculous. Anyway. I like that you just keep asserting things, but okay. <laughs> it's an okay. assumption for you to think that that's what it is. You're assuming that for some reason, somehow, Mr knowledge is poison you're assuming that somehow you're able to determine that the study was flawed but the but the study didn't show that they were judging based solely on skin they in your mind they controlled for all these things but that's it you're, explicitly uh, you're said that they controlled lot. for the previous crime crimes committed etc right. yeah but they're not controlling for the location and all kinds of stuff and then there's all kinds of crimes that are not listed in in those I'm sure uh, you're you know what you're right. I'm sure if a Thank crime you. was committed that was identical to the crime of a white person, the fact that the one guy was in Chicago and the other guy was in Maryland is definitely going to influence the uh, the length of prison time the person is that sentenced to. Is. Yeah, different states and different locales. To... I'm being sarcastic. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous to pretend that that's it's based solely on skin color. Give me a break. It's ridiculous right. to pretend that you can just make assertions based on your feelings. And then You're the expect us to it. take them tr as truth. Uh, no, people can see that I'm telling the truth. I don't expect people to just believe me just because I said it. Uh, you can see that you can either see that I'm telling the truth or you can't see it. It turns not out that not people. every truth it can be discovered via our eyes. And if it was, then again, I'm not talking about eyesight. I'm talking about like uh, you can clearly you can clearly recognize that that's true. Okay, or, so or if not, we were to go about yeah. your logic, uh, your logic train, then it would be the more reasonable thing to believe that the Earth is flat. But we all Why? know that the Earth is not flat. No, you can see a horizon that proves that the Earth is round, because otherwise, it would be like all you'd see all kinds of other stuff. Duh. Well, gentlemen, that is the time for our uh, Q and A. <laughs> we do have tons more questions, but uh, uh, I understand you uh, have uh, prior engagements. 
I believe. So it's up to you guys if you want to take one more. Yeah, why don't we I'm each fine. do one more? What cool. one more from Bobby L. Brown for four ninety nine. So why are the Latinos left out of this argument? The prisons hold more Latinos than Black Americans. Yeah, it's well, ethnicism. Latinos are also uh, disproportionately affected by a lot of the systemic racism. That's why I, I should be very clear that it's more like brown skinned people who are ultimately negatively affected by a lot of these biases as well. It's not just African American people. But yeah, that just once again proves systemic racism. So whoever chatted that, I appreciate you. Thank you for supporting my point. No, Bobby L. Brown is supporting mine, man, because uh, the reality is these people have disproportionate crimes and disproportionate attitudes, and you're leaving you're leaving out uh, whole whole aspects of reality with your studies that are yep. cherry picking different yep. things. I know anyway. there's no such thing as racism, but it's only white people that have good attitudes. I got it. It's not what I said, but that's fine. Okay, and then uh, Chloe McLean for five dollars Canadian says Hunter did not shy away from arguments and did a great job. Wow, Cute. thanks. So Hunter was that wins. a woman? Ah, was that a woman super chat? Sounded like a woman. Uh, <laughs> Chloe does sound like a woman's name. Chloe does um, sound like a woman's then name. North Korea, the the nation of North Korea itself, sent us 079 percent of a pound sterling. So that's awesome. Sweet. And then the Necromantech for $5 says, since Hake doesn't think racism exists now, what's an action that could be considered racist against black people? There is no such thing as racism ever. The reality is the deeper issue that affects everybody. That's, that's why I'm pointing it out because racism is only primarily used against whites who are the least so-called racist in the country. But they're treated as perpetrators when they're more often victims of the interracial violent crime and all the and all the other stuff, resentment and aggression I, and all kinds of stuff. Could I just get this on record then? So when the KKK would particularly target uh, black people and lynch them, you're saying that was not motivated by racism? No, it was because they were an outside community. If the KKK actually were the ones lynching, I think it was just community men who took it upon themselves to enforce the law because there was... A, a lack of law in those times uh, from an outsider it was this especially offensive for an outsider to commit a rape or a robbery an alleged rape or robbery or murder and so they would get in a in a in a um the men of the town would make an example out of it it was a um it was a the the way that they dealt with things it may not have been right but it was um a community-based uh protecting men looking out for their community I would like to get back to a little bit more of that rather than go to the opposite extreme of just rolling over for this stuff, rolling over for crime to go out of control and pretending like they're victims when they're perpetrators. Okay, sure. So just, yeah, let the record yeah, show that racism. the KKK was apparently not motivated by racism and you'd like to go back to that kind of a time than where we are now. So you want to go Manhood, back to primitive yes. times. Manhood, if you want to call that primitive, if you want to be so self-hating that you hate yourself as a man, you hate yourself as a white. I don't white. think that it, you need to be loving yourself as a – I don't think loving yourself <laughs> as a white man uh, means like attacking people who are from the outside group. No, I think not that what attacking you're arguing, just people randomly, but perpetrators. You alleged want perpetrators to look who out are more you. than not falsely right. accused and then were killed without, i don't know about more than not how, they were I don't know how killed you without this. due process tell me your statistics on more than not falsely accused they were killed without due process as well right i'm not for that but you said more than not falsely accused yeah there Show have been me various your statistics different, on that there have been various different lynchings that have all uh resulted later and shown that or excuse me there have been various different lynchings that were then researched and later shown that this person was not actually even in the vicinity of the woman who accused him of rape uh, and again, there was no due process, no trial. Instead, they just went with it and lynched him. And if anything, I, Hake, I, you, Hake, you should appreciate this. Yeah. This is a story, okay? This is a direct story. This nice. is exactly what you've been asking for. I totally agree that women do falsely accuse, even white women, uh, unfortunately, at times. That's why we shouldn't have gone with the Me Too lynchings. It was not just so, yes. women who would make these accusations. But right. again, I just but find were, it a little bit ironic. But you just mentioned a saying, case of a woman doing it. It was, but it wasn't, so, yes, it wasn't exclusively that was women good. that made this. But it also is just funny that you're you're essentially arguing for us to de-evolve. So, no, it's not de-evolving. I'm talking about returning to manhood rather Return than rolling over for— 
You're talking rather about rather than rolling over right now. Right now we're re- right now we're letting criminals out of oh, jail. Right, crime is going up like crazy, and you're pretending like we don't have a problem with black violent crime and black nasty attitude. There absolutely is disproportionate crime rates. Thankfully, though, we have an explanation as to why that is, and it's not just no, they all have a bad <laughs> attitude because my gut says so. All right. All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and wrap it up then. Uh, cool. I just want to remind everybody that we are promoting fair debates like Myth Informs Better Discourse Conference. Um, so no matter what organization they're put on, we're going to try to promote them tomorrow in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, uh, which is, uh, I believe, tomorrow, Saturday, April 23rd. No, that's am I wrong? Yeah. Uh, so people check that out. Um, looks like it's going to be huge. I want to go ahead and just thank all the moderators in the chat for helping to elevate the conversation and the discourse. I want to thank James for creating this platform for all of us to debate on. I want to thank everybody in the chat for uh, sending the super chats and for, uh, uh, for being great spectators. I also want to thank our debaters. They are the lifeblood of the show. Thank you both for being here and having a lively discussion. Um, I just want to say that uh, if you were here and you liked what you heard, please Check out our debaters' links in the description. Check out our after shows tonight in the Discord and uh, on my channel. Uh, like the video if you loved it. Share it if you want to spread it. And subscribe because we have more debates coming your way. And thank you, everyone, again. Have a great night. And remember to keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable. And have a great night. Thank you. Hey, Kyle, really quick. I had a. I wanted to ask yeah. your permission. Can I drop my, uh, my Discord link in the chat? Because I see quite a lot of people here who... Uh, don't seem to be fond of me. I'd love for them to join my Discord if they ever want to talk to me. Do it, do it, do it. All right, thank you. Yeah. I'd be totally op- open to talking with you more uh, sometime, Hunter. Appreciated talking with you today. Thank you, Hake. Have the, a good one. And you again, Hake is, Hake is going to be joining me in my after show. We'll be starting in about 10, 15 minutes if Hake is okay with that. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'll All take right, a little so break. Come join me. We're going to continue this uh, lively discussion. All right. Thank Bye, you. guys. All right. I'm, back to my sa- I'm going off to my safe space to cry. See you later. <laughs> oh. It was, it literally felt like trying to argue with a blind person the color red. That's actually how insufferably stupid that guy was. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get notified when I drop a new video.